fuel or the trash cans on the station platform, it makes my job a little easier at the end of the day. Now finally, this train will be leaving for East Middletown, Rise Grove, Clifton, and Stover there. Now if you're not going to any of those places, ladies and gentlemen, you are on the wrong train. Our Amtrak station is about two blocks over. All aboard. station for about 70 years. It was taken out of service in the early 1960s. After that, it was used for storage. We converted it for use as our passenger station and gift shop in the year 2000. It still has a scale in there for weighing the less than carload freight. And for the railroad historians on board with us today, we have the original Reading Company freight station sign hanging up there on the display inside. Now as we come down through the yard here, um, our shop building is on the right hand side where we do all our mechanical work. On the left hand side coming up is our car barn. These trolley cars on the right were last used in the city of Philadelphia. Up until 1992, they're known as PCC cars. Several of them are still in service on SEPTA. If you visit the Philadelphia Zoo, they run uh, on Girard Avenue in front of the zoo. Two cabooses on the left side. The larger one here is a former EJ and E caboose. Number 1987. Caboose number 91531. We do use those cabooses on our caboose trains. Uh, if you'd like to ride one of the caboose trains, uh, consult our brochure or our website, mhrailroad.com. Unit. 
until it became part of our public highway system in the 1920s. The modern day Pennsylvania Turnpike Park is just a short distance. We will be passing under that highway in just a few minutes. Middletown is the oldest town in Dauphin County. Founded in 1755, it derives its name from the fact that it is in the middle between Lancaster and Carlisle. Now most of the M&A Railroad is built right on top of the towpath of the old Union Canal. And the remains of that canal can now be seen over on the left side of the train. For the next several miles, all that remains over there today is a ditch. You'll we'll see it's pretty well overgrown now with trees and bushes. However, there are some portions of it in which water still lays to make it look just like a canal. Now, the idea for building this canal goes all the way back to William Penn, the founder of Pennsylvania. Mr. Penn was concerned that without a waterway from this central part of the state to Philadelphia, commerce from this area would flow right down the Susquehanna River to the port of Baltimore, Maryland instead. Nothing was done in the way of construction, however, until after the Revolutionary War. Then in 1791, a company was formed to build the canal. About 15 miles of canal was constructed in the Lebanon and Pennsylvania area. George Washington actually made several trips to view this construction since he was interested in building canals. But in 1793, that company ran out of money and construction came to a stop. It was in 1811 the Union Canal Company was formed. It was given permission by the state of Pennsylvania to conduct a public lottery in order to raise enough money to complete the canal. Finally, in 1827, the Union Canal was completed. It didn't attract the business it should have. The reason was it was built quite narrow to save money, while the other canals in the state were much wider. So most canal boats used those wider canals rather than this narrow canal in Philadelphia. The Union Canal Company realized their mistake and began widening the canal in 1851. This was really too late. The Philadelphia and Reading Railroad completed their line from Reading to Harrisburg in 1857, immediately taking most of the remaining business from the canal. Finally, in 1884, all operations ceased on the Union Canal. Now that last bridge we just went under is the closest thing we have to a tunnel on the m &H, and it is in fact the modern day Pennsylvania Turnpike. Fries Grove, next Fries Grove Station. Fries Grove was one of six stations we had on the m &H during the early days of the railroad. Fries Grove. Pennsylvania Railroad, which served Middletown. 
So in 1888, they incorporated the Middle Town and Hummel's Town Railroad Company. Then in 1889, they built the section of track you're traveling on right now from Middle Town to Stoverdale. They actually carried many thousands of people to the Stoverdale camp meeting that summer. Then in 1890, a bridge was built across the Square Creek, and the line was completed on into Hummel's Town. As soon as the railroad was finished, however, it was sold to the Philadelphia Reading Railroad. Even so, the Reading continued to operate it as a branch line under the NH name until 1924. And it was during this period of time that local residents who rode these trains affectionately referred to this railroad as the Milk and Honey Line. Now this is attributed to the line's initials M and H rather than the commodities it hauled, although much milk undoubtedly was hauled from area farms to dairies in Philadelphia. This was a busy railroad in the 1890s with six passenger trains each way daily in addition to the freight trains. But as uh, people began to acquire personal automobiles and roads began to be paved in the early 1900s, fewer people rode these trains, so the number of trains was reduced to two each way daily. And this continued for a number of years until economic conditions during the Great Depression forced the railroad to discontinue regular passenger trains. They simply added a passenger car to the freight train. This was known as a mixed train. Finally, in 1939, all passenger service was ended on the m and until we resumed these tourist trains here in the fall of 1986. The present ownership of the railroad is an independent corporation who purchased its assets from the bankrupt Reading Company estate one week prior to the formation of Conrail. We were never part of Conrail. New owners selected its original name, the Little Town and Almost Town Railroad Company, by which it is officially known and operated today. Now that scenic Swatara Creek, along which we've been proceeding, and these into the Susquehanna River at Middle Town, and the confluence of these two major streams was a major passageway for travel long before other people settled in this area. And as evidence that these ancient people were here for a very long time, Mr. Rich Hartwell, an artifact collector, found an axe head in that field off on the left of the train, estimated to be 10,000 years old. Other artifacts were found by Mr. Hartwell in this and other nearby fields. Much of his extensive collection currently resides in our state museum at Harrisburg. We're about to go under two bridges. Actually, it will be one bridge for each direction of the expressway between Harrisburg and Lancaster, Pennsylvania Route 283. Those elaborate structures out there in the cornfield are what we call rich man's deer stands. will be full in Mill Road in Lower Swanara Township. Now way back in 1822, Mr. Theodore Burr built a wooden covered bridge across the Swanara Creek at this location. Mr. Burr was a famous covered bridge builder in this area, having built four wooden covered bridges spanning the wide Susquehanna River. He built his bridges very well, and the bridge here at Clifton survived for 150 years until it was washed away by Hurricane Agnes in 1972, a 500 year flood. This was the location of our Clifton Station, which served residents on both sides of the creek by way of that covered bridge. At one time there was also a wooden platform here where farmers could place their cans of milk for pickup by the morning train. Clifton next, Clifton Station.
I mentioned before, most of the m &H Railroad is built right on top of the old Union Canal towpath. This area is the exception. In order to remain level, the canal is built on the higher ground to the left. Keep looking out on the left side into that field, you'll soon see a ridge running across that field. That ridge is the canal towpath, and the ditch on the other side of it was the canal itself. So perhaps with a little imagination, you might picture a canal boat being towed by a mule, slowly making its way across this field. Now the speed of a canal boat was just the walking pace of the mules that towed the boats. But slow as it was, it was still a much smoother ride than in a buckboard or a stagecoach over the rough unpaved roads of the day, so people did travel by canal boat. Incidentally, the boat fare from Reading to Middletown was 44 cents. That would be about $19 in today's money. But the canals were primarily built to carry freight. Heavy bulk freight, such as lumber, coal, pig iron, and lime. Speaking of lime, this area of Pennsylvania has extensive deposits of limestone underground, and in some areas the action of underground streams on that limestone have produced natural caverns. We're going to pass a small cave that opens up right along our tracks, a little further up the line, and I'll point that out to you when we get there. In the meantime, we're going to pass a limestone quarry on our left. Now the early settlers in this area used this limestone for construction and to manufacture lime to fertilize their fields. Manufacture was accomplished in lime kilns in which the limestone was placed along with burning wood or charcoal and broken down into powdery lime. At one time, there was a bank of six lime films that existed here off on the left side of the train. Due to their location, we presume the lime produced here was shipped by canal boat, as records indicate that lime was the second largest commodity shipped on the Union Canal. Four of those kilns collapsed over the years due to blasting at the quarry. We had to reserve two of them. Unfortunately, they were destroyed in one night in September 2011 by Tropical Storm Lee, which they tell us was another 500-year flood. So imagine that, folks, two 500-year floods in 39 years. Keep looking to the left, you may catch a glimpse of about a six-foot section of masonry wall. That's all that's left of the line films. But if you keep looking to the left, back through the trees, you will get a glimpse back into the quarry. This is a very old quarry. It had been in continuous operation from 1840 until 2015 when the lease ran out. Incidentally, in the late 1800s, a lot of the stone that came out of this quarry was used in the construction of the Middletown and Hummerstown Railroad, both for bridge abutments and culverts, as well as uh, the stone ballast on which our track was laid. Of our station and our footbridge is about 
that where our next curve to the right is located, but I can't show you the footbridge. It was also washed away by Hurricane Agnes in 1972. But they tell us that the coming of our railroad and the construction of that footbridge so commercialized the camp meeting that the church ultimately closed it and moved it to Mount Gretna, Pennsylvania. Now, after the camp meeting closed, there were a lot of those little cabins left, and the landowners sold those cabins to people for use as summer homes, fishing cabins, and some people used them as year-round residences. But they did not sell the land. They only leased the land. So about five or six years ago, when that lease ran out, the grandchildren of the original landowner decided to foreclose on those cabins. And the people were evicted, the cabins were torn down, and there's a modern housing development going in there now. The people fought it in court, but the judge said a contract is a contract. We're now uh, approaching that small cave I mentioned earlier. It'll be over on the left side of the train. Now, according to Swadara Creek folklore, the old timers in this area refer to this as the horse thief cave. For it was said that thieves could hide their stolen horses in this cave until they could get them out of the area under the cover of darkness. Keep looking to the left here for horse thief cave. Keep a sharp eye out. This horn because a lot of times the kayakers walk across here to look at the cave. Where's Steve Cave on the left? It's coming up very shortly. Where's Steve Cave? That is so now, if you didn't miss it, I'll try to point it out as we come back down the hill. Look out in the middle of the creek now. You see that uh, there's some kayakers and rafters out there. There's also a pile of stones. That pile of stones is what's left of the center pier of the Stonewheel Footbridge. Our Stonewheel Station was right where our train is now. It was a wooden three-sided structure, much like a rural school bus shelter. Keep looking out on the right for the stone remains of lock number 33. Now canals use a system of water locks to control the flow of water. And there were several of these locks from the summit of the canal in Lebanon to the end of the canal back in Middletown. Each lock required a lock keeper who generally had a house nearby. Now the life of a lock keeper was not very demanding, but he did have to remain within the sound of the boatman's horn. So in addition to tending the locks, many of them were also manufacturers of such goods and items as they could sell to passengers on the passing boats. As we come out of this cut, there'll be a field on the left side of the train, but the far end of that field was a stone farmhouse that historians tell us was a canal hotel. Unfortunately, that 30-inch snow we had in March a few years ago collapsed it. But it was used to house passengers and crews overnight, and I imagine there were stables here at one time. If you have a camera or a cell phone that takes pictures, get it ready now. We'll be about 35 feet above the water. This makes for a rather spectacular view of the creek and the limestone cliffs from upstream and downstream. By the way, folks, this is the spot designated for discharge of those passengers without tickets. Your first step's a giant one, but you're sure to make a big splash. Now, the bridge we're going over is 128 years old this year, so you may want to lift your feet off the floor to make us a little lighter. And to give you an idea how high the water was during Hurricane Agnes, the water was going over this bridge. Okay, we will be coming to a stop here. This is as far as we go at the present time.
We'll be sitting here for about five minutes while we prepare the train to go back to Middletown. We then go around in a circle like an amusement park train. We go from point to point.